gonna be a club. Right, this will be fight. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Right, touch gloves, come on, touch it. There are many observers who believe that Gabe Ruelas someday might be an even more formidable opponent for Oscar De La Hoya than his brother Rafael. Let's see how his style stacks up against the style we'll see later of Rafael. That speculation is, of course, unspoken in Gabriel Ellis's camp because the scenario almost requires that Oscar beat his brother Rafael to get that far along. Gabriel Ruelas is aggressive, loves to go for KO1s. He's had seven of them in his career, Roy Jones. And he's out here in a hurry trying to get another one. And this Watch is very small in a way, head. as long as he doesn't punch himself out. He is a champion, and he must come out here in this first round and prove to the other guy that, hey, you are in my house. Left hook. Snaps Garcia back just a little bit. Ruelas trying to get a right uppercut underneath. Now he misses with the left hook and lands it as he brings it back a second time. And Jimmy Garcia is just trying to get his legs under him here. Yeah, I think he stumbled just then. I don't think Garcia was really hurt. Garcia seems to have a chin of granite. But if he continues to get punched like he's getting hit now, it will have to wear down. It'll be interesting to see how often Gabriel Ellis goes to the body. When he is really effective, he sets up his knockout shots with heavy body punishment. Jimmy can become a problem with this jab of his if he continues to use it and use his head with it. You saw Gabe load the shot to the body and then come back with the left hook. Now, I think the body shot then just hurt Jimmy Garcia. I don't know if Gabe is aware of it, but I'm sure that the body shot hurt Jimmy. Ruelas keeping his eyes at the middle of Garcia's chest. Jimmy Garcia jabbing and backing up, but less and less assertive as the round goes on. is landing some heavy stuff here, Roy Jones. Very, very heavy. But if he continues to go to the body, eventually he will be able to get him out of there with either a head shot or a body shot. I don't think Gabriel's aware of the fact of how bad he hurt Jimmy Garcia with that body shot. Very hard straight left hand. Snap Garcia's head back. Seven first-round knockouts in the career of Gabriel Ruelas so far. Clearly, number eight on his mind here as he stalks Garcia. That was a good punch by Garcia. Yeah, he came right up the middle, and there he does it again. Now there's a hard right hand over the top by Gabriel Ruelas and a left to the body as he seizes the momentum again. Those body shots are doing at least as much damage as the stuff up top. If not more. The body shots will continue to set up the head shot. Looks as though Garcia is going to make it out of round one and get a chance to regroup. As for Gabriel Ruelas, he has established his presence in the first three minutes. Very much so. Keep in mind that Garcia went 12 rounds with another 130-pound champion who is undefeated, also from Los Angeles, Gennaro Hernandez. This is not just an opponent. All right, he's not the one little uppercut in. It's about 800 to 1 there, all right? Just be careful. When you throw that right uppercut, you, you're keeping that in there, okay? The other thing is, Gabe. Here you see what I would call a very calculated aggression from Gabe Morales. He used to be wilder. Uh, before the injury to his right elbow, where he still has five screws in there. He just came in winging his rights and lefts, uh, felt invulnerable. At one time, I thought, here's a potential future Roberto Duran. He's become actually a better fighter uh, since, that, since the injury, in my judgment. A more well-rounded fighter. Absolutely. I am impressed with the fact and the way that uh, Gabriel has brought the winging punches in, turned them into more sharper and more powerful punches. 
Jimmy Garcia was told between rounds, keep your hands up and you'll be all right. Not that easy to do when you've got Gabriel Ellis raking the ribcage. Exactly. As long as Gabe keeps keep hitting that ribcage, rib cage, it will, it will be continue, continue to open up shots, Gabriel. Gabriel. Now, now he's, he's getting, getting a little wide, wide and, he and he should stay sharp like, like he was. was. Garcia trying to find a weapon with which he can keep Ruelas off. It's going to have to be the jab. If Jimmy's going to do anything in the fight, boy, he's going to have, have to just, just keep sticking the jab. Yes, but he can't continue to sit there and just let Gabe do what Gabe wants to do. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Gabe landing the right, right hand searcher over the top. I like that punch. The referee said keep him up, and so the next one was right on the jaw. <laughs> with a rare jab. He landed 48 punches in round one, and 43 of them were power shots. Jimmy seems not to have any power whatsoever. And he's not being busy enough to just outpick Gabriel, because Gabriel is the one throwing all the punches. And now, Jimmy Garcia, for the first time, tries to out-throw Gabriel to the body in a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, and at least he got away with it in the sense that Gabe did not come back with something strong. But now Gabriel sees his command again, winging right hands, and Garcia, as you said, Roy Jones, not able to take advantage of the fact that Ruelas throws his punches so wide. I told you before that most of the, pan uh, the Latin fighters that are not from the United States usually are slow, heavier weight fighters. Was that true even back in your amateur days? Yes. The guys, who, well, anytime we faced the Latin guys, we always expected the wide, loopy shots because that's just the way that they train. Even the Cubans? No, the Cubans are a little bit sharper. The Cubans are a lot sharper, in fact. And the Cubans' basic technique is to hit and not be hit. That's what, that's what makes them so effective against our amateur team. This guy just takes shot after shot after shot. <laughs> Jimmy Garcia from Barranquilla, Colombia. He knew two and a half months ago he would have this opportunity, but he didn't come to Vegas until this past Monday. This his very first fight ever in the United States. Gabriel Ruelas fighting on the undercard of his brother Rafael's big night against Oscar De La Hoya. Give it up, come on, give it up. A very unique thing to see. You've got to start getting liver shots in. Okay, how do you do that? You go, you can throw in the right hand, and you're working the jab off of the right hand. No, right hand, bang, get inside, hit that liver. You're trying with too many hooks, what did I tell you last round? Mm -hmm. Okay, he's hip to it. Start getting to the body. You gotta start taking yourself from this side to that side. The right side of the left, bang. Okay, that's all there is to it. There's no reason to give him three, four, five second intervals in between punches. It's constant pressure on this guy. He hasn't done one offensive thing to you. No reason to even think he's gonna do something. Keep your hands up, walk through this guy. But you gotta do it with some style. You can't just keep winging him. I want you to get to the body. That's Jimmy Garcia's brother, who's in his face, saying, use your legs, throw three punches, and walk away. And you heard Joe Goosen urging Gabriel Wellis to get a little technique back and quit just winging shots. Uh, Joe Goosen gave Gabriel some very good advice then. He told him not to keep throwing the hook like he was throwing it because the guy's hip to it, and he's very true. Straight right hand by Ruelas. Ruelas stalking with sheer pressure, trying to come with uppercuts. Misses the left hook, but lands a left and a right to the body. Now Garcia is able to stick the jab. Here again, I think Garcia doesn't really realize what's going on in here yet. He seems like he's just lost. He doesn't know what he wants to do. He doesn't know which way he wants to go. But he can't take a punch. Gabriel, Gabriel is more confident than I think I have ever seen him in my entire life. And in the entirety of watching him box, I've never seen him.
perform with this type of confidence. So maybe that title did him a great uh, favor. Now, I was just going to ask you about that, Roy. There are some fighters, once they get to be a champion, get to be better fighters. I think, I think this, this may be the case, case of Gabriel. It's, 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 it's like, like they, they used, used to say about golfers, that once you win a tournament, you add 20 yards to your drive. Yeah, that confidence does come sometime, especially if you're not very, very confident that you can do it in the beginning. Well, it's doing damage to the body once again. Jimmy Garcia's got a little bit of a foothold in the fight here because he's proven, as Roy Jones points out, that he can take the shots. What he hasn't found is an offensive weapon which will keep Ruelas off of him. And if he lets Ruelas keep coming at him like this, he will not find an offensive weapon to keep Ruelas off. Guys, I hate to disappoint you, but I don't think he has one. <laughs> if he finds it, it's going to be somewhere else. He's going to have to borrow it, huh, Larry? Yeah. Goosen doesn't think so either because he told uh, Gabriel to put his hands up and just walk through this guy. And there, Gabriel does just that, walking through him to get him to the ropes and land a quick right-hand shot inside. But we had to figure if he went... Hard oh, left hook. That would hurt him. That yeah, would probably he, hurt him. He takes the punch pretty well. He's still up. But that would hurt him. Now, Gabriel needs to not get wild, and he may can get him out of there. Particularly if he goes to the body. I think one more body shot could set up another hard shot upstairs. Exactly. But there's not enough time. And give all credit to Garcia for being cagey enough and tough enough to weather this storm. This is way off. You see, Gabriel, you can walk chest up to him chest up to him, walk right into him, stand up tall with him. He can't hurt you. And you've got, you're too good a defense. Now look, here's what I want you to do. Instead of swinging from the outside, you had him hurt, you should have walked right up to him again and gone right up here. Bang. Boom. That's short. You hear me? Don't even... Now there you saw that left hand that buckled Garcia. But somehow, he works through it, taking another left hand and another one, hanging on, clinging on. He's a professional fighter, go, putting on a show go, and, go. and doing his best. And I think that's the first time that he may have been hurt in this fight. And that camera takes you inside Rafael Ruelas' dressing room, and you see him, eyes fixed on the monitor as he watches his brother Gabe in action. So, Rafael Ruelas not trying to ignore this action. He is deeply into it, as you would expect. Round four between Jimmy Garcia of Colombia and 130-pound world champion Gabriel Ruelas. Ruelas in the red trunks, Garcia in the blue. Gabriel has dominated the first three rounds with power shots. The only thing I don't really agree with is what Goosen is telling him just to walk right in on him. I think he should practice walking in behind the jab anyway. No matter how bad the opposition is, you always should practice what it would take you to do if you were fighting the best in the world. Practicing, practicing going in behind the jab is the thing for Gabriel to do. Great thinking, Roy. He's got hit with two uppercuts this round already, and they're not effective, but still, that's three. But still, there's no need to get hit if you don't have to. And that's four. I break the ball. It's also worth noting, Roy, that if he walked in behind the jab, he'd be giving Garcia at least one more thing to think about. Exactly. That's why, and I think that's the reason for going in behind the jab, to keep the guy's mind occupied until you get there. Watch those heads in there. Watch those heads. Come on, watch the head. Garcia trying to go to the body. There's blood coming from somewhere on Ruelas. I'm not sure where. There's Hard right hand blood. by Jimmy Don't Garcia. Punch. Exactly. That's because now Gabriel has gotten bored with what was going on, I think. Because he's just walking now, he's enabling himself to get hit with much more than he's ever got caught with in, in this fight. And there's another hard left hook by Gabriel Ruelas, who sneaked it in upstairs. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. Come on, watch the head. Come on. Watch the head. Let's go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ref 
Jeffrey. Mitch Alperin urging Jimmy Garcia to watch his head. Ruelas with a wild right hand shot and a wild left hand shot. And he wouldn't get away with stuff like that against an exceptionally good fighter. As such as Oscar De La Hoya. I hear you. His nose is bleeding now. That's probably from taking some of the punches Punch that he's taking in this particular round because he was probably told, well, we know he was told to go in and walk right through the guy. How much criticism does Gabriel come in for for impatience here? Well, that comes with uh, experience. I think he is, he, he is making a mistake by not being patient. This is why he's getting bored. This is why he's slowing down. Good, Cal. Oscar De La Hoya in his dressing room, relaxing, no doubt surrounded by friends and family and the members of his camp as he gets ready for his battle with Rafael Ruelas, the main event. Yes, Oscar, we're talking about you. God, he looks nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's going out to a picnic in the park? He's been like that for <laughs> six weeks. Uh, uh, the one thing that Oscar has declined to do is to express any fears or worries about this particular bout. He believes he's in great position to enter the ring against Rafael Luelas. There's no sense in worrying now anyway because you're not going to back out of it. <laughs> you're going to have to go in anyway, right? Exactly. So why worry? There you go. Gabriel came here to be a sort of a lounge act for his younger brother in this fight, and it's a pretty good act so far. Ruelas enters round five against challenger Jimmy Garcia, Baron Kia, Colombia. You know, this this might end up as an easy sort of a fight for Gabriel, but even in an easy fight, you can see, folks, it's never easy. Guys, when you're in a fight that's supposed to be easy, you still practice as though you were fighting the best fighter in the world today. That's what you're supposed to do in sparring every day. That's what you ought to do in the ring against a supposedly lesser opponent, Harold Letterman. How did you score the first four rounds of this fight? Well, Jim, I've got it 40 uh, to 36, four rounds to nothing, Gabriel Wellis. It's a very, very easy fight to score. The only thing you sit there and wonder about is if any of these rounds should be 10, eight rounds. You know, Gabriel Wellis has real, real snap to his punches. Jimmy Garcia is throwing all soft shots, doing virtually no damage at all. And the fact that Garcia is backing up, he loses all his leverage. So it's, it's Ruel is coming forward with, with the snap, with the hard shots. He's doing all the damage. He's winning the rounds. Garcia has gave, managed to... Excuse me, Larry, go ahead. Yes, Harold and I used to agree in almost everything. <laughs> used lately, to. Lately, we're growing apart, Harold. But in any event, I scored the last right, round punch, for punch, Garcia. I thought he landed more blows and was effective. And I did give a 10-8 round to Ruelas in the first round. In the meantime, Jimmy Garcia has managed to elicit a tiny trickle of blood from beneath Gabriel Ruelas' nose. After watching this a little more, I think if Ruelas did use his straight jab and his straight right hand more, he would not get hit. Uh, I don't think he would get hit at all. He's because... never been much of a jabber. He's just never wanted to devote, it seems to me, the discipline or time in the ring to throwing the jab because he's so anxious to hurt you with power shots. I don't jab either. <laughs> I know you don't. You got to have a lot of talent to fight that way. I was amused earlier when you were urging him to walk in behind the jab thinking, where was your jab against James Tony, Roy? I did use it when I needed, only when I needed. Now is one of those times when he should use it because it will stop him from taking the excessive punches. Keep it up. What you're saying is other fighters need that jab, but I'm Roy Jones Jr., right? No, I needed that time too. I said when I need it, I will use it. <laughs> I used to have one of the best jabs in the business. Keep it up. Keep it up. Go. Go. And then? And then I realized that when I'm out there fighting, the first mistake I want you to make is with your jab. Explain that, Roy. <laughs> nah, I better not do that, guys. They stop jamming at me. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so Roy I continues to urge the rest of the boxing world to use its jab, particularly against him. Do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. Five rounds in the books between Gabriel Ruelas and Jimmy Garcia. He's got to start 
your fight? Gabe, you got to get delivered for me. God dang it, how many times I got to ask you? You can do it off of a jab, you can do it off of a right hand, but you got to get there. It's a bit tight, you know? Uh, well, to tell you about that, we got plenty of time to get untied. Uh -huh. Come here. Keep it up, so keep it up, come on. No, you got to get him close, you know, and, and you just got to let your hands go more, Gabe, to the body. Keep it right I mean, there. you're winning every round, but, you know, you could be putting a hurt on this guy to the left side. Everything is over here, and he's getting out that way on you. I told you, stay over here. Deke him over here, and bang, you got to rip him. Watch for the left hook. I mean, you got to start challenging him. Saca el pie y golpealo duro al hígado acá atrás. Él lo coge también. Y tus tres manos rapidito y vete enseguida. Venite acá. Ya, ya vea, ya vea y nótate más. Roy, did, did I hear Goosen say, or, or Rella say that he was tired? I don't know, maybe, but I also heard Goosen say, use your jab or use your right hand or move your head from side to side. And those are the type of instructions that I'm used to hearing and that I think you should give a champion. And Gabriel Well is also told by Goosen to get to the liver. He doesn't care how he does it. He wants him to go back to the body. I agree with that one. I think Gabe has done most and best damage when going to the body first and then the head. And there he goes to the left side of Jimmy Garcia. And that's what he should be doing. That's what he should do the whole night. Even though Jimmy is taking everything, you beat his body. You can't hurt your hands too bad on his body. Good jab there by Gabriel Willis. Garcia comes back with his own jab. More of a pawing jab than the hard jab that might be more useful in trying to keep Gabe off of him. Gabe blocking most of these with his gloves and just looking for a chance to go in with another power shot. Certainly, Ruelas' activity level has gone down considerably since the first three rounds. Like I said before, when you're in a fight and you can just basically have your way, it's very, very easy to get bored. There's a right and a left, both of which landed for Gabriel, but now Jimmy Garcia has felt Gabriel's power and has a better idea of what's coming when he gets hit. Exactly. And Jimmy can take everything. I don't know why, but Jimmy just takes everything. I don't care what you hit it with, Jimmy will take it. One of the great mysteries of the sport, Roy, is why some fighters have a beard and some fighters don't, right? <laughs> One of them, indeed. I don't know if I have a beard or not, and I don't ever want to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. You know, sometimes when a, a fighter who is favorite has a good first round, he gets a little loose, and he just thinks he can go in and just by his being the virtue of the favorite or the champion, just go in there and just take over and do anything he wants. And he's just not getting back to the basics. He doesn't look anything near the way he did when he took the title from, Je from Jesse James Lejas. And he's fighting a loose fight here. And the perfect example of that, I think, was Ray Mercer and Larry Holmes. Garcia is backed into the ropes by another hard left hand, and Ruelas starts swinging away to try to capitalize on this opportunity. Lands another left, but once again, it is late in the round as this damage is being done. To the body, and that was a good shot. I'm impressed with the way Ruelas does work the left hand when he works it. Excellent combination to punctuate round six for Gabriel Ruelas. Just as I said, he wasn't going to basics. He went to basics and finished the round strongly. Hey, you see, you start working that left hand a little bit. Walk this guy down. Put your hands up. Push him. Walk through this punk. I don't want no part of you. I mean, Gabe, you can literally do this. Bang, bang, bang. Get right there and just crack. There you see... How he, how he, how he is going after Garcia recklessly, and there at the end of the round, how he finally got to him as he got closer to him. But you can also see some of the fire in this fighter. He wants to land punches with mean intentions. He wants to do damage. You're looking for that in a champion. Excellent uppercut there in that last replay. Round seven begins. Jimmy Garcia moving and jabbing and trying to stave off Gabriel Ruelas. 
Ruelas still looking for the knockout, which will shorten this piece of work and move the evening on forward toward his brother's showdown with Oscar De La Hoya. It also seems as though Gabriel may be catching a second win now, so we may be able to expect a little bit more from him. Yeah, there's some good left-handed work. Well, he certainly is clear in understanding now that the left hand is the weapon most likely to end it all. If it's all ended. Right hands to the body could help set up that left hook. So could straight right hands up top. So could a small jab every now and then. Jimmy Garcia doing most of the punching now as Gabriel looks for an opening and walks in behind the left hook. He did bob and weave right then before he came in. So that was better. Left hook again, right to the body. Garcia goes back to jabbing and hoping that he can keep Gabriel off. Hard right hand to the body there. Gabriel is starting to telegraph the left hook a little bit. And Jimmy can see it coming, so it's hard for him to catch Jimmy with it now. They always say the punch that hurts you most is the one you don't see coming. You concur? I concur, except when it's me. Because I've had a lot of people to tell me, when I saw it coming, then why did you get out the way? And how did it knock you down? <laughs> <laughs> I like to see when a guy gets inside, he constantly works his hands, just doesn't sit there and do nothing. Okay, don't push, don't Students push, don't of push, fighting. Push, for the people who come for the old school, there's something mystical about the left hook and its great value as a weapon. Watch those heads, watch the head, watch the edge of it, watch it. I think the reason for that, Jim, is that for a, an orthodox fighter, Get off, the left Keep it hook Come on. is the punch that can be most devastating because the opponent doesn't see it. It's right. closer right. to the opponent. When thrown correctly, it's the shortest punch, and it can do the most damage. Go ahead. Move him over there. Bang, man. Hit him right there a couple times. Just get, get in close. Put your hand out. Rip him to the belly a few times. Then start working that hook again. Okay. I mean, the, the, you, you really, you, you can literally drop your... I, I think I want you to drop your hands next round. Just to, so he'll start doing something. You know? Y no mete golpe, entonces también te quedas dormido con la cabeza y para y te coge con los ganchos eso. Ya, ya. ponerle vivo a esa vaina. A secarlo, a secarlo, a secarlo. Respira profundo. Cuando baje, mítele más. Let's take a look, Roy, at that double left hook you liked so much for Gabriel Wellis. Well, so actually, down, a left upper cup and a left hook right behind it. Those are the type down, of punches that you put together and show that you are learning and that you want to be a veteran and a champion. That was one of the strangest suggestions I've ever seen heard from a corner. Telling him to drop his hands. Drop your hands so he'll do something. Uh, I'm sorry. I think Roy is right. You got to fight this like you're going to fight the best fighter in the world. Bad habits create more bad habits. And you don't want to drop your hands against the best fighter in the world. And Jimmy Garcia's corner telling him, neutralize the left hand and you'll be okay. Their belief is that Ruelas' whole attack at this point is the left hook. Did they tell him how to neutralize the left hand? Break, 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 don't punch, don't punch. No, he didn't get an interpretation on exactly what he's supposed to do to neutralize the left hand. What could he do? Well, for one, he can move his head more. He just stands there in front of Ruelas' with his head in one spot. He never moves his head. Look at him. Now, a little bit of paint to the left, which is still not enough to get out the way of a left hook. 
Tennessee. Of course, it is the right elbow that Gabriel Ellis broke midway through his career, and which has, as Larry Merchant pointed out, five screws in it. He doesn't throw the right hand now the same way he used to before that operation. He's also had a wire in his left shoulder since his early teenage years, but he says that doesn't bother him at all. And the way he's touching with that left hand, I wouldn't think that it would bother him because he's throwing his left hand very, very effective tonight. Jimmy Garcia tapping lightly from time to time and Gabriel Ruelas pawing with the jab, occasionally throwing tapping shots with the right. Ruelas all too frequently loading up power shots and just trying to put Garcia away with one mighty blow. It says Jimmy Garcia has 25 knockouts. Hard to imagine how, huh? Hard for me to figure out how did he get these knockouts. They were all in his native Colombia. And now Ruelas lies against the ropes in a corner and waits for Garcia, and Garcia takes advantage to land what, even though they don't do damage, are surely scoring blows. This must be part of the drop your hands and make him do something strategy. Sun setting in Las Vegas, the lights are on in Caesars Palace's outdoor arena. Seats are filling up. Eight rounds complete between Ruelas you and heard Jimmy Garcia. You heard a ruckus just uh, during that round. It was Robert Shapiro, O.J. Simpson's okay. attorney, coming into the arena. He's a big boxing okay. fan. I want to go back in that corner again, okay? to 1990 and Larry Merchant you and I were ringside on this particular day when Gabriel Ellis broke the right elbow against Jeff Franklin you can see that Franklin had him caught between arm and rib cage and stepped away in such a way that he literally ripped the elbow backward and broke it and it was that which caused the five screws which are now lodged in the elbow and the arm Larry just won't straighten out there's Shapiro, incidentally. Now, I have never seen a, a uh, an injury quite like that in the ring. Somebody suggested that it was uh, a jiu-jitsu geo move of, on the part of Franklin, some kind of uh, an unusual move that did that. But he he wasn't the same fighter after that, and now he is a different fighter. You see he doesn't throw the right hand uh, as often or perhaps as wildly as he once did. And that explains why he probably doesn't use the straight right hand. Because it can't come straight. Can't come straight. No, the arm is uh, congenitally yeah. bent at this point. No, but at, at the same time, he hurt Leos with that straight right hand. Harold Letterman, your score so far. Jim, 79, 73, seven rounds to one, Gabriel Wellis. In the eighth round, I feel Gabriel Wellis just laid on the ropes and gave the round away. I mean, he did nothing offensively, you know? Didn't have that old snap to his punches. Garcia is certainly not a heavy hitter, and he's doing the same thing in round nine. I don't know why he's laying on the ropes and giving rounds away. He's fighting I mean, a curious well, fight at this yeah, point. Yeah, when Garcia moves forward, he gets leverage, and it's all there is to it. And Garcia certainly needs leverage. And Jim, one side like the guy in the corner with Gabriel Wellis, his former New York Mets catcher Greg Goosen. Gabe now is trying to spring forward off the ropes and use them to set up extra leverage as he tries to knock out Garcia with one shot. His tactics in the last round allowed Garcia to throw 118 punches, which is an extraordinary punch out, good boy. Yes, but none of those punches are very effective punches. And I think what Gabe is trying to do is the best time to punch a guy is when he's trying to hit you. And I think Gabe is laying back in the corner so that maybe Jimmy will try to hit him and then he can land a better shot. This is a frustrated fighter in Relis, and, and I don't like what he's doing here. I don't think this makes a lot of sense. Uh, let him go out and fight his fight. Now, what about Rafael sitting in the dressing room and watching his brother fight what might become a 12-rounder here, Larry? Uh, Rafael is a different breed of fighter. I don't think it'll bother him one way or another. He knows that he's not his brother, and his brother is winning the fight. 
you do what you have to do to win. I think, as uh, Roy said earlier, he's uh, he's bored and he's trying to amuse himself here. Bearing down on a half minute remaining in round nine. Gabriel Ruelas defending his 130-pound world championship against Jimmy Garcia of Colombia. Garcia clearly too, too light a hitter to do damage to Gabriel Ruelas, but he's hung in, taken punches, and managed to frustrate Gabriel a little bit as they near the end of round nine. Great, great, great. Now he's starting to use a jab a little bit that he should have been using the whole night, but it's not effective at all. Gabe lands another left hook. Jimmy Garcia taking pretty well as he has throughout the bout. And there's another look at Rafael Ruelas holding up one finger, no doubt to designate himself as number one. And then he holds the thumb up to let us know that he's in good shape and not going to be bothered by watching his brother go the distance if that turns out to be the case against Jimmy Garcia. Coming up in our main event, down the road tonight, Oscar De La Hoya against that man, Rafael Ruelas, for world supremacy at 135 pounds. We're going to get him again, all right? That's all there is to it. He's difficult. He's holding. He's moving. He's not really obliging you too often. So you just get to the body a little bit more. Take that right to the left side. Just try to keep opening him up. The only way you're going to do that is by staying on top of him. Jimmy Garcia's corner telling him that Gabriel Ellis is getting tired and it should be his turn now to beat Gabe to the punch. I don't think he'll be able to beat Gabe to the punch tonight. But he has managed to bother Gabe enough with the jab to short circuit some of Gabriel's combinations. You can see Gabriel thinking combination and getting ready to throw a three or four punch sequence and then Jimmy sticks the jab out and temporarily stops his momentum. But I don't think that's beating him to the punch. I think the jab is supposed to offset the, an opponent. But he's not beating him to the punch because he's not hardly ever punching. You think he's tired, right? Uh, Ruelas could be tired because he's bored. I don't think he's deadly tired or where it's dangerous. But I'm sure it's very easy for your mind to start playing tricks with your body. And your body telling your mind that now I'm tired because I have nothing to do. You have no challenge. You have no ambition in there. You, it's nothing else for you to do. You can't knock the guy out. The guy opposes no threat to you. So it's very easy for your mind to just start to go to the bad things in, in the ring. Isn't it also extra tiring, Roy, to have to depend on one weapon over and over and over? I mean, if he really feels like he's only going to do the damage with the left hand, keep it up, keep it up. it's cool. tougher that way, right? Yeah, it is tougher because you only got to throw one punch, and that's the only punch that really lands. It's the only one that lands hard. It's the only one that the crowd roars about, so it has to get bored. How much does the roar of the crowd mean to you when you're a champion like Gabe is and you're in there against a friendly or against a uh, an out of the country opponent with a friendly crowd behind you? It can mean the difference in night and day. Really? Going there is your crowd. When they roar, it's supposed to spark you, give you energy, give you that extra added confidence that you need to stand out over the rest of the, the field and box. But might you get frustrated if you can't deliver the knockout they want? Sometimes you can't. And that can cause you to be impatient. It can cause you to make mistakes. It can cause you to start getting tired because your mind starts to go off into another world. And I think we've seen a little of all of that from Gabriel Ruelas tonight. legs are gone. Somebody should stop the fight. Yeah, this guy's finished. If he keeps taking this, he's going to hurt Frank, 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 Frank. Mitch Halpern gets a good look at Garcia. Gabriel Ruelas comes in again. I think if he goes to the body, he'll set up a knockout shot. I don't think this guy will survive Frank, Frank, this don't round. Push. Don't push. He's barely standing right now, but 10 seconds left in the round. You okay? Garcia effectively holds long enough to stay up. His right jaw is swelling immediately. I think he might have broken the jaw there, Gabe. I, mean, I, boy. I think so, too. Okay? This guy is hurt. This guy is in bad shape. This is a fight that should be ended now. 
It doesn't look as if Garcia has any chance to turn it around. He's hurt. Far, far behind. There really is no point in going on with this fight. I totally agree. Well, you saw Nevada State Athletic Commission Dr. Flip Homansky conferring with referee Mitch Halpern there. They've decided to let Timmy Garcia go forward if he wants to. This Here's is another terrific look. Terrific round for Ellis. He really took his time. He did throw what? a few straight left hands. Right now? And Stays that's right. what did the damage at the end. Seconds out. He really got back Seconds to basics out. there, Roy. And, you know, he's a creative kid. He does the fashion design. He, he, he needs to be interested in what he's doing. And so you're right, he was bored. I told you that, but this fight does need to be stopped. How much more does he have to take? Yeah, the guy has no chance. The referee sees that he cannot knock Ruelas out. He doesn't possess that power. He's only getting battered. I don't like to see stuff like this. this I don't either. Thank you. That's enough. Doing a good enough job of painting by numbers in the 11th to persuade referee Mitch Halpern that it was going to be target practice from there on out. Yeah, Garcia is a clever game kid, just not enough weapons to stand up to a strong champion like Gabriel. And he is strong. The one thing that you did say that I do admire in Garcia is that he's very, very game. He was a very hurt fighter. He still begged the referee to let him continue. He did not want to stop. He would have been out until the end, but there's no sense in taking this punishment, especially if he doesn't possess a knockout punch, because he definitely needed a knockout to win. If you don't have the knockout punch, then there's no sense in you sitting there taking the punishment. 13 Ruelas brothers and sisters here tonight to root for Gabriel and Rafael. They celebrate now. Will they celebrate again later in the evening? Maybe they will because their brother is taking a big step. <laughs> Here's another look at the punches that led to the stoppage. Mitch Halpern in good position as he watches Garcia. And as at that point, he said he'd seen enough. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Caesars Palace, before I give the official time, how about a round of applause for the courage shown by this young challenger from Barranquilla, Colombia, Jimmy Garcia. Let's say goodbye to the fucking...